Hey everyone, Jay with Dad Things, and in today's video I'm going to show you how I upgraded my iPod 4G. So the iPod 4G was released in July 2004. I used to work in Apple retail and I got this for myself as a going away gift. I got it at a pretty good employee discount and I wanted to gift myself something that I could remember my time at Apple retail. I used this as my music device until 2009 and you might be thinking to yourself, well wait a minute, didn't the iPhone come out in 2007? Why were you using an iPod all the way up until 2009? Well, for a number of reasons. One, um, if you don't remember, the original iPhone came out with four gigs of internal storage. I got my fourth generation iPod with 20 gigs of, sto of storage and I could store thousands of, mus uh, thousands of songs on my iPod, more than what I could store on my, on my iPhone. And the process for loading f songs onto your iPhone wasn't that much different than loading it onto your iPod. You still had to use iTunes, you still had to drag and drop songs from your desktop or laptop computer onto your either phone or your iPod. So there were no streaming services back then. You still had to load uh, actual digital files of music that you owned onto your devices so you can listen to them. It's almost 20 years old at this point and I started thinking to myself, I wonder if I could restore that thing. So I did some research on the internet, I looked on some different websites and it turns out there are a number of resellers that make replacement parts for your iPod. Uh, so for, for my iPod, I replaced the battery and I converted it to use an SD flash card. So this thing came with a 1.5 inch uh, spinning hard drive and I replaced that with a 64 gig SD card uh, memory card. And I also wanted to do it just for fun. I have, I've had this iPod, I also have an original iPod that I just keep with me as kind of like a, you know, cool Apple hardware from the past. And I wanted to see if I could still use it. And it turns out once you restore it, you actually can. So I'm going to show you how I did that in this video. So before I got into this project, I ordered some parts from iFixit, the replacement battery and some tools to help take apart my iPod. I also got the 64 gig memory card and the adapter that converts from the spinning hard drive to accept the uh, flash SD card. I also got an audio cable to connect my AirPods Max to my iPod, which has a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. So here are the tools that comes with the uh, iFixit repair kit. I uh, ended up using only a few of these tools, but they're nice to have in case you do something in the future. And here is the, uh, the replacement battery for the iPod fourth generation. So the first step is to take that little guitar pick and you have to wedge it into the side of the iPod where the metal and the plastic connect. It took some effort, so I've speeded up the video here just to make it quick. And I had to be super careful not to break any of the plastic latches that hold the two pieces together. So I finally get in there and I was able to slide the, the little guitar pick all the way through to unlatch all the different plastic latches. And so from there you can open up the iPod and it open up, opens up just like a book but you have to be kind of careful because there are ribbon cables that connect the spinning hard drive to the logic board. Uh, in this case it came out pretty pretty easily uh, and then to disconnect the hard drive there's this little uh, cable that easily comes off and there's the hard drive right there it's over 20 years old so I'll put that to the side and the next hardest part was to take off the battery it's there's a ton of adhesive and I was super careful this is just a portion of the video of, of me taking it out and I sped that up but I had to be super careful not to break the logic board but there was a ton of adhesive connecting the battery to the logic board. And so now I have to go ahead and make sure everything is still intact. And I'll go ahead and 
attach the new battery. So when, when I took out the old battery, I, I ended up breaking the cable. So now I have, to, I have to kind of figure out which way I need to route this, this power cable, which connects it back to the, to the logic board. And it took me a while to figure it out and how to neatly tuck in that cable so it all fit correctly. So I went ahead and sped that up, uh, screwing back in the screws to hold the logic board in place. And now it's time to take the adapter logic board and take my SD flash card SD memory card and install it into the adapter and then get that adapter using another adapter to install it into the iPod 4th generation. So I'm going to fast forward all of this, getting the SD card out of the, the holder there and then now it's time to get the flash card into the adapter. Now this takes the place of the spinning hard drive and it's pretty crazy that a company out there actually makes this hardware because without this, you know, this whole project is kind of kind of pointless. I wouldn't put a spinning hard drive back into uh, an, an old iPod. But you can see here it just there's a there's a holder for the SD card. You just you just install it there and it even has the nice spring latch. Uh, if you have a digital camera, you, you know what I'm talking about. It it spring latches in there. I push it in and then uh, I take, there's this other adapter because they make one adapter which fits with the newer, you know, quote unquote newer, later uh, model iPods, I think fifth generation and later. But since this is a fourth generation, you need this adapter to adapt from the ribbon cable on the logic board to the actual uh, iFlash converter. And this part's pretty scary. I had, it, it tells you to fold it in a certain way so that the connectors on both ends will match up and fit neatly inside the iPod. So at first I was a little bit scared to, to completely fold it or, or, or force the, uh, the fold. And I had a, a couple, I had to try a couple of times to get the actual pins to line up, slide in and seat firmly into the, the adapter. But once I folded it in the correct manner, I got enough leverage to slide it in and get it to, to hold securely. So that's something that you want to remember if you ever decide to update an older iPod like this. So I finally get it in there and I'm going to go ahead and attach the other set of pins into the ribbon cable on the logic board. This one wasn't as difficult. It was a lot larger and the, the receiving end was a lot easier to, to handle. So not too much effort was required to get that end of the ribbon cable in. And after that, it, it, seats, it sits in perfectly in the case of the iPod. And before wrapping everything up, I think I'm just trying to figure out which way the, the ribbon cable, the adapter cable folds. Uh, they give you this cool little uh, spacer with double-sided tape and it's mainly to keep the SD card firmly seated so it just literally just sticks on there and keep, prevents it from moving. So now I think on this step I'm, I'm, I'm plugging the, the cable back into the logic board and now everything just snaps tightly closed. And I was a little afraid to be too rough with it. I didn't want to break any of those plastic latches. But once everything is all lined up and you push everything together, I just made double sure that everything was nice and snug. You're, you're ready to go. Now the hardest part, I sped this up. I, I think I spent just as much time trying to figure this out, but getting the iPod to be recognized by my M1 MacBook Air took a while. I even took a lunch break, but after some messing around, I'm able to get, get it recognized by iTunes and I'm able to load some old MP3s that I've had 
since my college days. So I go in and, and there everything is. Once I go into artists, some of the MP3s I've loaded are on there. I unpack my, my audio cable, hook them up to my AirPods Max. Now, I actually bought this one off of Amazon. It turned out to be the wrong one. You actually do need the official Apple audio cable meant for AirPods Max to connect to an audio source. Otherwise, it won't work. This was just a data cable. But if, once you get the right cable, it's simple as plugging both ends in. And you can see there I've got up to 60 gigs, almost 60 gigs of storage space. You know, 64 gig memory card minus some space for the actual operating system and the songs that I loaded on there. And it works. And it, to be honest, so much nostalgia brought back from loading up these MP3s and listening to them on an actual wired set of headphones. It was pretty great. Another thing that's cool is once you hook the, your AirPods Max up to your iPod, the buttons actually work for volume up, volume down, start, stop, active noise cancellation, all that stuff works. So what are my thoughts on restoring an iPod? First off, I think it was a fun project. I mean, it, it actually got me to open up and tinker with my hands. Um, it wasn't the easiest process, but once everything was all closed up and then once I figured out how to load music, onto it it was definitely a, a fun thing to do and now that i have a functioning 4g ipod i plan to use it uh, i don't know when but i i think it'd be a fun thing to do from time to time what was the hardest part of this uh, i would say definitely taking it apart uh, this is you know almost 20 year old hardware uh, probably the second hardest part was actually figuring out how to connect it to my laptop have it have my laptop recognize it and then actually going in and to load music onto my iPod. It's definitely not straightforward. Uh, some things have changed, but uh, I was able to figure it out on my own. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked what you saw, please hit subscribe or leave me a comment down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.